This video is sponsored by Setup. Stick around until the end of this video for more. I've had the pleasure of testing and reviewing just about every Mac that has come out over the last however many years that I've been doing this, which has been quite a long time now. I've certainly had the chance to test out the latest Macs that you can buy from Apple, and so this video is going to serve as sort of a buyer's guide for your next Mac. Now, the one thing I try to recommend is to at least try and future-proof your machine as best you can and within your budget. If you can splurge a little bit on some extra internal storage, I would say definitely go for it. But it also just depends on your needs. One terabyte is probably the sweet spot for most people, but if you can spring for two, I would feel more comfortable that way personally. So maybe you would just having a little bit extra. Anything above that, four, eight, and certainly not 16. Uh, from Apple's prices, it gets really, really crazy. So I would recommend just getting an external SSD or other mass storage options. Now the same applies to RAM. Most machines now start at 16 gigs, which is probably more than enough for most people out there. But if you run a lot of memory intensive applications, then I would recommend going for 24 or 32 gigs, unless you're someone who falls into that more pro level category, which we'll touch on in just a minute. At the time of recording this video, it is April 2025, you can purchase six different types of Macs from Apple. There are the more affordable options like the Mac Mini, the MacBook Air, and the iMac. And then there's the MacBook Pro, Mac Studio, and the Mac Pro for those who need a lot more power and performance. There will always be exceptions, not everything is black and white, but honestly, most of these machines are so good now that the type of professional you would think would need like a Mac Pro or a Mac Studio can easily get some of the same level of work done on the lower end models like the Mac Mini, the MacBook Pro, or the iMac. And that's mostly thanks to Apple Silicon, which is so efficient and powerful that it can handle far more than what Macs could do in the Intel days. In fact, the latest season of Apple TV Plus's incredibly successful show Severance was actually edited using those three machines, a Mac Mini, an iMac, and a MacBook Pro. I don't know what the exact specs were of each of those machines, but just knowing that they didn't use a Mac Studio or a Mac Pro that was maxed out is honestly really impressive. Apple just recently released a brand new M4 MacBook Air, so let's start there with some of the lower end options and then we'll work our way up. This laptop is what I would call the perfect laptop for just about everyone. If you need something that's portable and powerful, this is it. It does have a few limitations, but it's mostly perfect for students and office workers who just want something thin, sleek, and well-optimized for video calls, note-taking, emails, writing documents, spreadsheets, etc. If this is a personal laptop and you need to do web stuff, or you want to watch content at home and bed, or whatever the case may be, it's a great option for those people too. Apple's displays are honestly always really good in my opinion, and the one on the MacBook, while not as good as the MacBook Pro, the one on the MacBook Air is really good, and it comes in a 13 or 15 inch option. The camera has been updated to a sharp 12 megapixel 1080p webcam with center stage support, so that keeps you in frame during video calls. If you decide to move around a little bit, it'll kind of follow you around, and you even get desk view, which features a top-down view of your desk. The prices start at $9.99 for a 13-inch and $11.99 for the 15-inch. And these can work again for most people. So students or small business owners who don't need to run a lot of resource-intensive applications. And just to note, again, it's not all black and white. I'm a video editor and I have definitely edited a lot of pretty crazy projects on a MacBook Air, especially while traveling. And it wouldn't be my preferred method and it's not as smooth as something like a higher-end machine, but it's definitely possible and you can can do it. For those who want that same level of performance but don't need portability, you've got the iMac and the Mac Mini. So the new M4 Mac Mini is so compact that I would argue it's still very portable, though it doesn't include a display, so you'll need to bring one of those along with a keyboard and a mouse. But it is Apple's cheapest Mac and it starts at $599. Now the Mac Mini's biggest thing here is that it offers you more ports, uh, especially more than the MacBook Air, which only gives you two USB-C. Uh, but this will give you a couple of USB-C ports on the front and then depending on the model that you get, you can get up to four Thunderbolt 4 or 5 ports and the HDMI port here will just give you more flexibility depending on what type of monitor you want to plug it into. Uh, there's also an M4 Pro Mac Mini, which delivers you even more power and is perfect for creatives working in video and audio production, photography, design, or even software development. 
The iMac shares much of the same performance as the other M4 machines. It's largely going to be the same. Uh, also just kind of depends on what RAM or storage options you go with, but M4 chip as a whole is going to be roughly the same across all of the machines. But the biggest thing with the iMac here is that you get an incredible 4.5K Retina display, which is unmatched in the all-in-one category in my opinion. I've yet to see another display like this on another machine that isn't an iMac that's this good. It has a fun, sleek, colorful design, great for businesses and households that not only want a computer that performs well, but also looks really good too, matches the aesthetic of whatever office environment you have it in. You get two to four ports depending on the configuration, and the speakers on the iMac are excellent, better than the ones that you get on the MacBook Air or Mac Mini, that's for sure. You have support for Dolby Atmos and spatial audio, and they're just more than enough for most people out there. You probably don't even need to get any external speakers. With the Mac Mini, I would definitely say you should get something if you're gonna be watching a lot of content on it or listening to anything. Now, when it comes to the higher end Macs, they all kind of fall into the same bucket as the ones that we just talked about, but they're just a lot more powerful with some extra pro hardware features sprinkled in. So let's take a look at the MacBook Pro. You can choose between the M4 chip, by the way, or the M4 Pro and M4 Max chips. The design will look familiar like the MacBook Air, but includes some pretty awesome upgrades like three Thunderbolt ports, HDMI, and an SD card reader. The display is also mini LED and it supports ProMotion up to 120 hertz refresh rate. And it just looks and feels significantly better than the MacBook Airs. Though to be clear, I really do like that display. I think it's very good. The MacBook Pro just takes things up to a whole nother level. You also get a 14 inch or 16 inch screen size option. And depending on the configuration, it is an absolute beast powerhouse machine probably better than most other machines in that price point. I personally have a 14 inch uh, M4 Max that I use on a pretty regular basis and it handles everything that I need for my video editing work without breaking a sweat. If you fall somewhere in between a MacBook Air or a full on MacBook Pro, the entry level M4 MacBook Pro is a perfect middle ground. Similar performance to the M4 Air, but with premium hardware features like that Pro display and expanded port selection. And one thing I forgot to mention about the display on the MacBook Pro is that you do get the extra configuration option for a nano texture display, which basically greatly reduces any uh, glare or reflections on your MacBook's display. This isn't available on the MacBook Air, but it is available on the new iMac if you choose to get that. Most people won't need a Mac Studio or a Mac Pro, but those options are also available for those who do. But honestly, after finding out Severance was edited on a Mac Mini and an iMac, I'm not entirely sure who actually needs one, uh, but there are people out there who are definitely pushing the performance limits, and the Mac Studio can be configured with a whopping 512 gigs of memory and 16 terabytes of storage, depending on which chip you get. You also have the M4 Max as an option or an M3 Ultra chip option. Now, I personally do use a Mac Studio at the studio here for 99% of the work that I do, but I could easily work off a lower spec MacBook Pro and be totally happy. The Studio has a similar design to the Mac Mini, but with a lot more connectivity. You get four Thunderbolt 5 ports on the back, 10 gigabit Ethernet, USB-A, HDMI, and a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, which by the way, that last one is actually available across every Mac in the lineup. I just forgot to mention it. Uh, but some models also include two front-facing USB or Thunderbolt 5 ports, and there's also an SD card slot. Lastly, there's the Mac Pro, which really hasn't been updated yet and it still runs the m2 ultra chip which is still very powerful up until about a couple of weeks ago when the new one came out uh with the mac studio i was still running the m2 ultra mac studio and that was really really good but unless you need pcie slots i would probably stay away from the mac pro at this current time it's highly configurable though with expansion options for ssds raid storage capture cards and other accessories i loved my mac pro setup Granted, it was with Intel back in the day, um, and it was ultra fast. I had 16 terabytes of SSD storage and 70 terabytes of regular hard drive storage, and it was just crazy to be able to put all of that inside of my tower, which, by the way, looks super cool. But as of right now, I would probably just wait, maybe get a Mac Studio, unless you really, really need something like right now with PCIe, then that's a good choice. TLDR, I think every Mac is pretty much capable of doing almost anything for anyone, but you're gonna wanna get the right one for you. So hopefully this video helps you out. Um, you just first off need to figure out whether you need a desktop or a laptop. And if you're unsure, my safe pick is just to get the M4 
Pro, MacBook Pro. It's portable and you can dock it like a desktop and it has great hardware, a fantastic display, and then it performs like a desktop and can handle just about anything. But again, if you don't think you need that and you fall into that first bucket of just people who really just need it for the basic web stuff and uh, office environment work, like the video calls and all of that, then just go with the MacBook Air, you'll be plenty happy. And of course, I'd love to hear from you and what Mac you either A, currently have and what you use it for in the comments down below or which one you're thinking about getting. Now, before we end today's video, I'm going to let Dan in a totally different shirt tell you more about today's sponsor, Setapp. Setapp is the ultimate place to get apps for your Mac and even your iPhone. For one monthly subscription price, you get access to hundreds of apps. And these apps aren't just like random apps that you wouldn't have any use for. In fact, there are tons of apps that I was paying for on a regular basis and quite frankly, couldn't live without these apps. For example, Paste is an absolutely fantastic clipboard manager that I have been using for years. I have it synced across all of my devices and anytime I copy anything, it goes into this easy to find tray that I can also categorize or search for keywords words in order to find something that I might have copied and pasted months ago. I use this daily as well as CleanShot X, which is just an excellent screenshot tool and screen recording app that takes your basic screenshots and screen recordings to a whole other level with so many great features and tools for annotating, blurring, and editing the content. I've also been a recent user of Notch Nook for my MacBook Pro because it just makes the notch on my MacBook far more useful by acting as a place for more information at a quick glance. I can toggle media controls or I can drag and drop files to that notch and just be able to use it as a tray for holding and then sharing those files later on. And there are just tons of other useful features. There are actually so many great apps to choose from here and I highly recommend that you just give Setapp a try. And you can try Setapp with an extended 30 day trial by clicking on the link down in the description below or scanning the QR code here that you've been looking at on screen. Thanks set up for sponsoring this video and of course thank you so much for watching and i look forward to seeing you around in the next video